Sixer Nation, I don't know about you, but this morning when I woke up, I had to thank the basketball gods for giving us James Harden. Last night was an absolute beauty, and we're here to talk about it. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today, we got to talk about James Harden's debut. Not only was it good, not only was it great, it was perfect. Him, Embiid, and Maxi fit like a glove. But before we get into the nitty-gritty, help your boy out and hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and ding that notification bell so you know when these videos drop or when we go live to talk about the Sixers. Before we get into my actual thoughts, I want to go over some of the plays that stood out to me because it wasn't just James Harden being James Harden. It was him finding ways to help out Tyrese Maxey, help out Matisse Stiebel, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid. I mean, Embiid said in his postgame talking that he's never been more wide open. And it's not just him being nice to James Harden. I got the video evidence to prove that he's never had this much space because nobody cared about Ben Simmons when Embiid picked for Ben Simmons. Let's get to this first one, right? Embiid's going to give the ball to James Harden, and Cat is not going to stick with Embiid. He's so nervous of what James Harden can do. He flirts with James Harden, and Embiid gets so much space down by the basket could have got the oop, didn't do it, but able to gather his feet. And when Embiid is that deep, nobody, I repeat, nobody can stop him. Watch the play. James Harden comes around. Look, that little hesitation. Next time, Embiid's going to throw that down. But that little hesitation allowed James Harden to boom. Look at Cat. There's three guys looking at him, right? If James Harden don't want Embiid, he's going to kick it to the guy on the wing. Boom, that's an open three. But again, Cat is staying in front of Harden because he got that floater. Harden says, nah, I'm good. Next time, Embiid's going to dunk that. But still, too deep, too easy. It's just that simple. Now, when we go to the next one, you're going to see the same thing. Joel Embiid, too easy. Here we go. Joel Embiid setting a pick for Harden. Look what happens. Uh-oh. When have you ever seen Joel Embiid pick for anybody on the Philadelphia 76ers and nobody ran with Joel Embiid? There's not a person on this team, even Curry when he was knocking down threes, that commands the respect that both people went to Harden. Look at Joel Embiid. Wide open. So what does Harden do? Give it to him. And who's the only guy down there to guard Embiid? The point guard. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, D'Angelo Russell. Once Embiid is in the cylinder, that cylinder, I don't care who you are. There's not a grown man in the NBA that can stop Embiid once he's that deep, let alone the point guard. And it all stems from, once again, James Harden. Pick, they're going to double. You made a mistake. That's the MVP right there. That's the MVP right there. What are you doing? James Harden already making an impact. And... Part of the Sixers, uh, not downfall, but part of us not being able to produce the same way last year on offense that we can on this year was because the pace was gone. If it wasn't Joel and B getting buckets, there was no pace for the Sixers. What does Harden bring? Look at his pace. James Harden, this is a long miss from Reed, their center. What does MB do? Tip it to James Harden. A couple dribbles, maxi, outlet, buckets. The Sixers are playing with pace again. And I know Ben Simmons could do that, right? Ben Simmons was a good facilitator in transition like that, but he couldn't facilitate the way Harden did for both Embiid's easy scores because nobody respected a jumper. But Harden not only can do it in the half court, he can do it in the full court. I think we had like 25-plus fast break points. Looked beautiful. Look at this. Couple dribbles, pass. Easy. Maxi with the finish. You got to love that. You got to respect that. 
And let's look at some more fast break, right? Matisse Thibel. Look, another miss. Harden. One dribble. Now, that looks like an easy play, but it's not. He sees it right before it happens. Boom, one dribble. And it's a pass. It's a quarterback pass. Beautiful. Matisse Thibel, a guy who has energy, one of our most, one of our more athletic, if that's even a word, our more athletic guys able to run down there and do what he does. And shout out to Matisse Thibel for that little putback before the uh, halftime buzzer. That was beautiful. Danny Green missed the three, and Matisse went up and climbed the ladder. Bang! Gotta love that. But once again, the fast break is just created by Harden. One dribble, sees it, easy. Easy buckets for the Sixers. Now this one I want to talk about, and a lot of people are like, it's just a pass at half court. But there's only a couple players in the NBA that I see do this. One of them, was in a championship last year. That is CP3, right? Sometimes you don't have to have the pretty pass behind the back, skip, you know, through the legs. That all is extra and it's good, but it's to know when to pass. What is the defense doing that you think you could take advantage of? And James Harden is going to be walking the ball up the court, and because he's walking, he's showing that we're going to slow this down and, and, and take the shot clock, right? So what does the defense do? It gets lackadaisical. And Hart is like, psych, passes from half court to a wide open type of, to buy his Harris for three. And again, it's these type of plays that guys like CP3 and James Harden can do. And let's not act like this was a lucky game with 12 assists. He averages, I repeat, averages 10 assists. So look, Harden slowing it down, slowing it down. Not even at half court. Boom. I see it. I showed you that I was going to slow the possession down, which slowed your defense down, and I lied. I was slow, but Tobias Harris knew. Look, Tobias Harris walking up, Harden, cross the court, bang. Tobias Harris, one more time. Again, Cat is going slow. Everybody don't know what to do. And why was Vanderbilt over there? Look one more time. Look at this guy. Vanderbilt was over there with the headband. Look how late he is. You know why he was over there? The guy running to Tobias Harris right now, do you know why he was over there? Because he was afraid of James Harden. Up too late, wide open three, bang. Now, last but not least, before we talk a little bit more about my thoughts and, and, and we don't look at the video, is when I used to watch James Harden play against the Sixers, whether he was a net, whether he was a rocket, I used to hate, I repeat, hate the step back because I thought it was a walk at first. Realize it's not. Um, and he gets called. He gets the and he gets the foul call way too much to my liking. Because I was the opponent. But I went from hating it to loving it. And look at this step back. Look at this. Mono e mano, one on one, step back, and one. It's just unguardable. Unguardable. And by the way, James Harden shot seven threes, made five. He was five of seven. And I said in the pregame that Ben Simmons attempted five threes in his career. And I promise you, James Harden will at least attempt five in this game. Attempted seven, made five. He made more threes in his debut than Ben Simmons did in five years for the Sixers. Wild. I understand Ben Simmons don't shoot threes, blah, 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 blah. Seven of 12. The most beautiful part of this whole thing, right? Let's look at the step back one more time. Look at this. One more time. Uh, uh, uh. He, don't, he don't know what to do. Whenever you need a bucket, you're going to have Harden to get it. Simple and plain. Whether he assists on the bucket or he scores the bucket. But this wasn't the only step back. There was like three or four step backs. Two of them. I repeat, two and ones. Two clean step backs. Two and one step backs. Five three-pointers made, and y'all miss Curry? Five three-pointers made, 27 points, 12 assists, eight rebounds, and y'all miss Drummond? Y'all missing Drummond and Curry and the ghost of Ben Simmons who didn't play a single game for us? Knock it off. Like I said, this game wasn't good, wasn't great. It was perfect. And I know the Timberwolves are not that big of a juggernaut, right? But they are over 500. I think they're 32 and 29. 
They are over 500. And we didn't just beat them. We beat them by 31. One of the Nets' biggest fans on Twitter, he got like 50K followers, said for all this James Harden hype, he better help the Sixers at least beat the Timberwolves by 30. (laughs) He didn't delete the tweet. He kept it up. But we didn't beat him by 30. We beat him by 31. James Harden had 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 12 assists. Would have had more if we didn't have to sit our players. Joel Embiid, the biggest gripe was, well, Harden's going to hog the ball, and Embiid is not going to be able to do him. He had 34. 27 and 12 for Harden. 34 or 30, 32 or 34 and 10. Don't look like they were ball hogging. And oh, by the way, Maxie playing off the ball. Well, Maxie can't play off the ball. Lies. Maxie playing off the ball, knocked down some threes, knocked down some mid range, got some assist from Harden for easy layups. And oh, by the way, he dropped 28. Now, I know a lot of people want to talk about Tobias Harris, but I'm too happy to be talking about any negative. And Tobias Harris was nowhere to be found. I understand that. But here's the thing. The third best player can fluctuate between Harris and Maxi. It'd probably be Maxi more often than not, but it's the luxury we have. I know we pay him money, but stop counting the paper. You're not paying him. Let's just go get this chip, and then we can move on from Tobias Harris. But once again, two and ones, two clean step backs, passes to both Tobias and Maxi and Matisse that just made their job easier. And at the end of the day, Joel Embiid has never got these type of looks. And this is game one. Game one. No rust. Fit like a glove. You let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I can't wait for another one. And another one. And another one. 23 games left. The Sixers, to me, are going to win at least 19 of the last 23, which will put them, you know, when we were talking about 24 after the All-Star break, if we win 19, it's 19 and 5. I'll take it. 20 and 4 sounds good too, but I'm going ha- to hang out with 19 and 5. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section when it comes to the Sixers, the fit, Harden, and Bede, Maxi, your excitement. And I'm going to go check my last video and see who was the closest. If you think you were the closest, let me know so I'll go check. But I'm going to find that out and give the $25 to the winner. But, man, if you are excited as I am, let's try to get this video to an easy... Let's try to get this video to 200-plus likes. Can we get this video to 200-plus likes? And if you are new, subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure you hit that notification button. The subscribe thing is behind my picture. We gonna let it rock like that. Once again, I appreciate the love and support. You know we did damage to the crown royal bottle last night that's why the video coming later but i love you guys for real sober i can still tell you i love you pause until next time y'all know what time it is we are out